Uh, we're going to begin at the 51st verse. 51, I believe, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Praise the Lord. I'm missing water here. What, what These allergies. Ooh. Yeah, change of weather. Uh, Luke 9 and 51. Everybody man say, has it? Hey, say amen or hold me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And it come to pass when the time was come that they should be received up and he steadfastly set his face to go towards Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face and they went and in, entered to the village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would not would go towards to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not to come to destroy men's life, but to save them. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this word and this message here tonight. We ask you to anoint my lips of clay and ask you to use me. And, and it's for your glory, for your words. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Jesus went to a village and uh, and he was going to go towards, uh, he wasn't going to go there. And uh, his face was those that he was going toward Jerusalem. And James and John, these are men that walk with Jesus every day. These wasn't men who were drunkard men or, or Republicans or, or drunkards as she supposed. You know, these are men that walk daily with Jesus every day. Amen. And Jesus turned around and rebuked him. He rebuked him and he said, you don't know what spirit you are of. They wanted to command fire to come down from heaven. They didn't receive you, Jesus. And let's consume them up and burn them up and, 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 and consume fire to come down on them and burn them up because they ain't going to receive you. And Jesus had to turn around and rebuke them because he didn't know what kind of spirit they are of. It's like a lot of church folks today, they get into the wrong spirit. They don't know what kind of spirit they are of. And when a sinner man comes off that street, he comes up up down here and sit down and come down to the altar. The church folks, seem like they want to push them out of the tent or push them out of the church because they're not in the right spirit. Well, that guy stinks. He got an odor to him. He don't smell like us. He don't fit in like us. But we're going to kick him out. Come on now. Hallelujah. That's why a lot of people have been hurt by church members, by church folks. You know, and they've been raised up. Uh, uh, I talked to my wife today. She had her brothers and sisters. You know, they wouldn't even want to come to church anymore. They don't want to come until they was raised up so hard and so harsh by her mother. And she was so strict to them. And every time they go to church, they can hear their mother's voice. She was so hard on them. You know, sometimes we need to preach out of love. Yes. You know, we need to preach out of love instead of hate all the time. And condemning people all the time. Well, you're going to hell for this. You're going to hell for that. You're, going, you're doing this. You're doing something wrong. You're going to die. You're going to burn into a devil's hell. That's right. Come on. You know? Yeah. Preach it. Come on. Anointing, Lord. When people are telling people, well, you're going to die and burn to hell if you don't turn away from your sins. Well, of course they know that. Yep, that's right. Of course they know. Your heart knows if you're going to hell. Your, you know, your heart's not right with God. But we got church folks in today, or want to tell our loved ones or our family members, "Hey, you're going to burn in hell for that. You're going to burn in hell for that. You're going to do this." And 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 the high respect that they come to church, if they hear that all the time, Amen. High respect they gonna come to the Lord if they hear all that all the time. Come on. They're not going to receive Jesus. That's right. Come on. 
Huh? My dad, my dad, uh, 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 he said, he, you know what my dad done to me? How did he got me in the church? I was backslid. I ran from God. And my, I was raised in church. We was all those boys was raised in church. My dad said, well, you son, you're going out there, uh, 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 going out there with your high school buddies, and you're going out there to the lake, or you're going over there partying and drinking, uh, you're going to die and burn in hell and everything. You know what my dad told me? He said, son, I know what you're doing is wrong. I don't, I don't approve of it. But I'm here to let you know. I'm here for you. I'm praying for you. I'd rather for you get back in church and get your heart right back with the Lord. Yes. And help me in the ministry and the gospel. Yes. Oh, Dad, I'd go with you one day. Always made excuses with my dad. Mm -hmm. He always invite me to go to church. Come on. Invite me to go to the, mm -hmm. the uh, help him out in the revivals and stuff. Because I was a musician. He taught me how to play the guitar when I was 13, 12, 13 years old. My dad played the guitar. I used to come home from school and throw my books down at the door. And I'd go straight to his room and grab out his uh, music sheets and his music. My dad showed me three chords on the guitar and I taught myself. I learned how to play all them songs, Jim Grocery, uh, uh, Jim Crow, Crow, all them whirly things. You know, I learned how to put my fingers where the guitars and everything and, and learn what to do and everything. And uh, I got pretty good at it. And I played in high school and rock and roll and trying to fit in with the buddies and had high school bands and stuff. And, and my dad, you know, uh, my talent was from the Lord and and God taught me to learn pretty quick, pretty fast. All my other brothers were jealous of me and mad at me and, and everything. And uh, I come home from school one day and uh, uh, I go in there every day. It made the same old routine. I go in there every day, Brother Forty. I go play my guitar, have my record player and my guitar and my little amp. Uh, the lady at church gave me and had a kind of like a Gibson like guitar. And uh, I come home every day, same old routine. And I go in there one day, my guitar's there. I mean, uh, my record player's there, my record, my amp's there, but my guitar's gone. So what in the world happened? I, first thing I come to is my, one of my brothers. Hey, you know what happened to my guitar? I kicked him in his leg. I was probably 13, 14. I don't know what you're doing with that stupid guitar. I don't play that stupid thing. I'm glad it's gone. I said, you had something to do with it, didn't you? No, I didn't have nothing to do with it. You know, he lied. I knew he lied. I could tell. I said, I don't play that stupid thing, that guitar, because every day here, bang on the wall. Hey, turn that down. I'm trying to watch TV. He's watching Three Stooges or something, you know, cartoon or something. In the living room, he couldn't hear because I had that thing blaring up so loud. If you're going to play a song, play the whole thing. Just not bits and pieces of it. You know, he's always downing me and ragging me and stuff. And, you know, I was just learning. And I come off the school bus, because we live at the end of the road when I got off the bus, and I walked down there the next day, and I saw, it looked like I saw my guitar you know, in the trash pile. The neighbors had some carpet and sheetrock and wood and trash and stuff, but I saw poking underneath the shadows, Brother Forey. It was my guitar, guitar neck. I said, all right, I found my guitar. My brother threw it over in the trash. I picked it up, and I pulled the guitar neck, and trying to pull the whole guitar out, it wasn't the whole guitar, it was in pieces. He cut the neck off. Oh, man. Yeah. I was mad, man. The fight was on. Uh -oh. I went over and hit him with that guitar neck. <laughs> and we ran around, mess up the house and everything. Guess what? Before Daddy got home, the house was spotless when he got home. <laughs> <laughs> they said, what are y'all kids huffing and puffing for? We are in there throwing stuff in the clothes and closet and rugs. and We done tore the house and we done fought from one end of the house to the other, breaking over tables and everything else. Chairs. We done straightened up the living room and everything. But, you know, that's what he did. But, but uh, uh, I told him, you know, if y'all want to play stuff like that, y'all had the opportunity and chance to play guitars and stuff and all. They didn't want to have time. They, had, they was too busy wanting to play with their friends and buddies. And 
too much you don't want to run the streets all the time ride bicycles do whatever but anyway uh my dad would always invite me to go to church and i think one day he prayed so hard brother for him they'd always make excuses hey i'm, I'm getting on the telephone and, you know we had them rotary tuck getting on the telephone calling our buddies uh we thought we was in hog heaven when we got the push top came in. And uh, I'm calling him up and making an excuse. Hey, man, what are you doing? Hey, I'm doing this. Hey, can I come over? Yeah, you come over and hang out. And uh, I think my dad prayed so hard one day that uh, he invited me to go to church in Kerrville, Texas with him. And uh, I called all my buddies, all my friends, all my circles, immediate friends. Everybody was busy that day. Or they going to do something that weekend. No, I'm going over to my aunt's. Uh, we have a funeral. We're going out of town, or we're going to be over my kid folks. No, I can't do it. We got something to do. My dad want me to go over here. We got to go see my aunt and blah, blah, blah. And all my buddies, I didn't have nothing to do. I said, well, I'm going to be here at the house all by myself. All my brothers are gone. They're, they're off with their friends, and they're out there doing their little thing, and here I am, I'm going to be at the house all along. There ain't hardly nothing in the house to eat. I knew if I go with my dad, at least he's going to buy me a hamburger or something or a piece of chicken. At least I know I'm going to eat good better than what here is at the house. You know, eating bloody sandwiches or something. You know, there's food there, but it's not what, you know, I want to eat. But uh, it's just enough till you get back on the three-day revival. And I told my dad, I said, yeah, dad, I guess I'll finally give in. I said, yeah, Dad, I guess I'll go with you. I said, yeah, why not? I, I ain't got nothing else to do. I said, I'm going to be here by the house by myself. <laughs> nothing to do. All my friends, everybody's gone. My brother, I ain't my brother's way even there. Nobody was there. I'm going to be there at the house all by myself. I wasn't scared to be by myself, but I just didn't want to, you know, be there by myself, you know? I said, yeah, Dad, I'll go with you, and I'll, I'll finally win. And my dad invited me to go. Lord behold, I went down there. He preached in the revival down there. And I was hanging on the back of the altar on the pew. My knuckles turned white, white, hanging on. I didn't want to let go. God was tugging at my heart. I, I surrendered my life to Jesus. I come down to the altar. The Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. 1986. Amen. A, a fresh day out of high school. The Lord saved me, filled me with the Holy Ghost. I graduated in 85 and 86. Duh, duh. Six months later, January 86, the Lord saved me, family of the Holy Ghost. You know, it's like James and John. You know, they want to call fire down from heaven. You know, I've been to a church where this guy was in here, uh, went into a church. And sat down and I guess he sat down by two old ladies and I guess he was talking to himself or something, murmuring, whoa, 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 are you coming down off drugs or drinking? I think he wanted to get saved, somebody to pray for him. So the ushers got him and ushered him out there outside the foyer out of the church. And I walked around, I walked over there and I said, uh, hey, uh, what's going on? Hey, you need to get back in there in the congregation, mind your own business. I said, hey, this is my bed. I'm a minister. I see these people all the time. I go out in the streets. I've been out in the streets with my dad. I've been in the ghettos. And we cast out devils. And I've seen people want to get saved and get deliverance. I said, matter of fact, I said, this is my business. I said, here's my card. This is what I do. I said, did y'all offer that man, offer to pray for him? Oh, no, you need to get back in there. This man, he's, he's full of the devil. Oh, he's full of this and that. And, and, and they escort him out. They call the police on this guy. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Call the police on this on this man and kick him out of the church because he was interrupting the service. Had him arrested. Had him arrested. Mm -hmm. I said, 
I said, all you had to do is go outside and take him outside and pray for the man. Have you ever even asked, asked you to, to pray for him? Did he need yes. prayer or, 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 hey, we're here to pray for you? Come on now. Uh, 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 I could tell he was looking for something. He was hungry. I could see it in his eyes. He was crying and everything. But no, they had him in hand because he said, I don't want to go to jail. I just want Jesus, somebody to pray with me. And they know they kicked him out of the church. Oh, man. Kicked him out of the church. And it's supposed to be a, a one of these good churches and everything. I ain't going to say no name or who it is or what the church is or what the name is. But I'm here to let you know some people got a nitpicking spirit. They don't have the love of Christ in them. They don't have the compassion of Jesus Christ in them. They got this holiness, uh, 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 self-righteous spirit in them. They, they think they're holy in them now. They think they're better than everybody. Well, if Brother Romo don't come in with the three-piece suit and tie, he's not going to fit in our circle. Oh, if he got to shave his goatee and his beard and his mustache, he's not going to fit in my circle. He's not going to fit in our clique. Let me tell you something, buddy. I said, I don't go on to fit in your clean. If you got that kind of spirit inside of you, I'm going to have a Jesus spirit. I'm going to praise the Lord where there's love and there's compassion and I can feel the love of Christ. I don't feel the love of Christ in you if you got that kind of spirit. Amen. Come on. Huh? Right. Come on. I'm not going to go with you where you're going to go because that's not the right kind of spirit. That's, right. uh, Jesus, that's why Jesus turned around and rebuked them. They were not forget fire to come down from heaven. And Jesus turned around and rebuked them. They weren't drunkards or wine on or drug out. These were James and John walking with Jesus. It's church the members. Yes. Church members. Church members are the only army that they kill their own wounded. They want to kill the people and kick them out of the church. Well, you know, he don't look holiness. Well, she ain't wearing a long dress all the way down to her feet. Well, she don't have long hair all the way down to her, to her ankles. Well, she might not have a long dress or long hair. At least she ain't got a long tongue to go with it. Woo! Come on. Huh? Don't let up now. Huh? So people let their tongue, if you get a hold of them, the Bible said your tongue is the most deadliest poison, the most deadliest thing there is, your tongue. You know, people kill people with their tongue more than they do anything else because they got a lot of hatred, a lot of jealousy, a lot of bitterness in their heart. With their tongue, they can kill one another with their tongue. Oh, Brother Romo, let us know when, we, when a, a preacher comes down here or a prophet comes down here, let us know. We want to hear him, but we don't want to hear you. Uh -oh. Huh? Woo. They want to hear a prophet like a fortune teller. To tell them something good. But I'm here to let you know you better repent and get out of that spirit and get a Jesus spirit inside of you. Right. If you Be come here to look for word. a church that to tickle your ears and pat you on the back, buddy, you're in the wrong spirit. Come on now, come on. You need to get the word inside of you. People want to go to church. I see it everywhere I go. They want to hear a prophet. The proper side to them. Oh, you're going to get a lot of money. Woo, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord's going to save your household. Yeah. A preacher like me telling you you need to repent. If my people were taught by my name and name and humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven. Oh, they don't want to do that. Uh oh. They don't want to work at it. Oh no. They don't want to have to do any sacrifice. That's right. They don't want to have to work. They don't want to ride the coattail like the preacher do it. They don't want to do it. They don't want to get down on their knees and pray. They rather somebody to do it for them. They think this is a, a drive through service like McDonald's. Well, we get it and go, and that's it. Take it all. Everything's fast food. Huh? Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth. Whether you like it or not. You know, some people are in the wrong spirit. They come to church in the wrong spirit. 
Huh? Mm -hmm. They don't have the compassion for anybody. Well, he's not Pentecostal or she's Baptist. Uh oh. She don't fit in our circle. Huh? What if Jesus said, well, you're not part of me. You're a drug addict. You're a drunkard. I'm not going to save you. What if Jesus had that kind of attitude like you have? Huh? Mm -hmm. Everybody be dying going to hell. Come on. If Jesus had a love and compassion for the lost, for the dying, who cares what they are? Who cares how they dress? Who cares what they look like? God could come down here and save them and set them free and He could clean them up. He could clean them up. God clean it up. Yeah, everybody wants to try to clean them up and everything and, and, and don't even worry about the heart. Yep. Huh? I know some people look, look holy, dress holy, talk holy. When they go home, they live like the devil. Uh-huh. I seen a lot of lot of so called named churches. You think they supposed to be a holiness church? And you go to their houses and you look through their TV and you look through their uh, uh, magazines, porno magazines. You look through their uh, 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 CD collection player. They got all the worldly stuff. Hank Williams. They got uh, ZZ Top. They got ACDC. All that junk. Well, they well they preach behind the pulpit. Come out from among the world and they're living like the world. Come on. Huh? Bringing the world into the church. Bringing the world into church. Uh huh. Come on. Preach it. I don't call them plenty lost penny costumes anymore. I call them plenty lostals. <laughs> they act like the world. I said I went to work one day and this guy said he was a Pentecostal preacher. He's cussing like them. I said. That guy, he called himself a preacher. Yeah, he's a pastor of First Pentecostal Church down there. He's a pastor. He's a pastor? Wow. And he's cussing me, telling dirty jokes more worse than we are. He's smoking and drinking. Wow. Wow, he's smoking like a broke stove. Look at him. That's like he's running a Man. I ain't here to point fingers at anybody. But when you're supposed to let your light shine, and, 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 and let your light shine. Men supposed to see your light and supposed to let them know that you are a Christian and you're supposed to live in a Christian life, a holy life. How do you expect you're going to win souls if you're acting just like them? Right. Huh? Supposed to set a standard. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. I wasn't going to preach or speak to all this. The devil was attacking me so hard and heavy and everything, you know. But, you know, if he didn't do that, I know I, I, I ain't doing nothing right with God because I know I'm on the right track. Yes. I know God loves me and he loves me. Right. This is his tent. I dedicate to him. I'm not here to... They'll make a million dollars and say, well, there's a hundred people who want to give it a hundred dollars and God will bless you and everything and, and he'll give you millions of dollars and you bless a, uh, you bless a prophet you get a prophet's reward. I've heard a lot of that junk. You know, they, all it is is trying to swindle people to give money. They'll make them feel like they had to give. But I ain't here to beg you for money. God said, hey, I've never seen his righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. God's people don't have to beg for money. They don't have to beg for anything. If God, if God lays it on your heart to give until it's over, whatever you have, that's, you know what? The, the woman, the widow woman only gave two mites and she gave more than everybody else did in the Bible. She ate by all her living. That's all she had. Was two little mice, probably two little pennies. She gave her whole life savings away, and that's how the church world looks at you. You know, they look at you that way. Well, that's all she gave was two mites, huh? Look what she done. Oh, I, you know, I gave a hundred dollars, or I gave a thousand dollars. Look at me, Mister Big Shot, huh? Want to be seen and everything. Want to be heard. Come on now. Want to get the glory from man instead of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, God blessed her because she gave up her heart. She didn't have to be seen or be heard. She gave what the Lord gave her on her heart. 
You know, that's like a lot of church folks, you know. That's why Jesus rebuked James and John, because they wasn't in the right spirit. That's right. They was in the spirit of the flesh. Uh-huh. They got in the spirit. They want to destroy those that didn't accept Jesus as though he went, his face was going towards Jerusalem. Well, this man fired come down from heaven just like Elijah did. Let's kill them all, Lord. Kill them. They ain't going to receive you. Let's get them. Uh -oh. That kind of spirit. Jesus turned around and said, you know what kind of spirit you are. I didn't come to destroy men's life. I come to save them. Mm -hmm. Why kick them out of the church? Why boot them out of the church? You know, if God could change a drug addict like me into a preacher and change a prostitute to a Sunday school teacher, you know, there's nothing too big for God. He could change, you know, he, he could change, get the lowest of the lowest of the scummiest of the over the earth and make the best preacher in the whole world. Yep. That's God. I didn't have to go to no Bible school, uh, uh, school or theology and, and theology and got all kinds of degrees and doctor degrees up on the wall. If you ain't got the love of Christ in you, all them degrees don't mean nothing. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost inside of you and the Holy Ghost to lead you by the Spirit of God to tell you what to say and what to do, all them degrees and all them theology don't mean nothing a hill of beans. Nothing don't mean a hill of beans. That ain't nothing. Come on. The apostles didn't go through Bible study. They, they got taught by Jesus. Right. Through the Word. Through the man himself. They didn't go through Bible studies, colleges and everything. That's man-made stuff. Well, you got to sit up under this uh, 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 Bible college for a year or two before you go and preach. Not me. When I first got saved, Phil, I went out passed out tracts. I passed out tracks, gospel tracks. Somebody gave me a whole bunch of them somewhere. Got a whole bag of them. Now, let's say they took them back. They took them back. Why did they take them back? Indian givers. They give you something, they want to take it back. Well, they wanted you to give it out that night, I guess. Uh, no. It, man, they had a whole bunch of tracks. I was going to pass them out. I'd go around the grocery stores and pass them everywhere I go, every people I see. That's what I did when I first got saved, Brother Ford. I went out there and passed out gospel tracks. I had one of them had a little seed in it, like a mustard seed, and everything it had a seed in it. I said, take this seed. And one guy, he was high as a cat. Oh, man, he got the good seed. Is this the kind I can grow and smoke? Oh, no. I said, no, it's not the kind you can grow and smoke. Keep on reading. Take it home. <laughs> not the kind you can grow and smoke. I said, man, that guy's passing out seeds, man. I said, yeah, I'm passing out seed. I'm planting the seed. I said, I hope you get it in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good to see y'all coming in. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just about to close up. We was te uh, teaching on uh, James and John how Jesus uh, they was on the other side. Let me read that again. I ain't gonna hold you long. I just gonna read it right quick. Was it Luke? Yes, it was Luke. Luke. Nine and uh, fifty-one. Nine and, I got it. I got it right. Luke nine fifty-one. Uh, here we go. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. And he steadfastly set his face to go towards Jerusalem. And he set messengers before his face. And they went and, and, and entered to a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go towards Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, were thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not to come to destroy men's life, but to save them. 
See, there's a lot of religious folks and church folks wanting to destroy uh, 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 church members, or not even church members. People come into church, people who are lost and undone. Uh, uh, a prostitute to come in here will walk in here half naked and the church folks want to kick them out. But they, they're not in the right spirit. Well, if she's not dressed like us, she don't have long hair and a long dress and a long tongue to go with it. <laughs> she's not dressed like us or look like us, kick her out. If I told my wife the other day when I started this vow, I hope a wino comes under his tent stinking and smelly I hope all the ministers uh -huh. under here, yep. all the preachers coming here on the last night, I, I pray and hope a, a wino come off the street stinking and smelling. You can smell him from all the way back there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over and give him the biggest hug. The biggest hug, bear hug. And say, well, I love you. I'm glad you're here. Yes. Pray for him. Yes. Huh? Amen. People got a lot of pride and well, I'm afraid I don't get messed up my clothes. I'm afraid I'm going to mess up my suit. It'll wash. It'll wash. Yeah. You can take a bath. You go home and take a shower. Who cares if I smell like it? At least I show that man love. That might be a man. You know what? I see a lot of bums and hobos and bums or, or millionaires walking up down the street. See, you know that guy got showed me some love? I've been in all these churches around this city. Nobody, they all kicked me out. But that tent minister over there showed me a, a love and a hug. And he hugged me. Guess what? I'm a multi-billionaire. I'm going to give him a million dollars. You know, I've seen that happen. I'm not doing it just because I want the money. I'm doing it because I, I want to show him I, I love him. Oh, I want him to get saved, to get right. Yes. You know, I don't care if he got some million dollars. I don't want his money. That's I'm not right. in it for the money. That's right. But I'm just saying, you know, people got a lot of pride in them and everything. They don't even want to give them the time of day. It could be an angel. It could be an angel of the Lord. Yep, that's I was saying, you don't know what you entertain angels of, you know? Unaware. Well, I remember one time when we was a kid, me and my daddy and mama picked up a hitchhiker in the 70s. we pick up a hitchhiker. And, and, and my dad bought him breakfast uh, and bought him dinner and coffee. It was cold. It was raining. Nobody else would do nothing for him. And, and he and, and, and picked him up, got him in the car, and bought him breakfast as he got through. And we got up and leave. We turned around and looked, and he was gone. Vanished. Go. The Bible says, "Be ye not forgetful to entertain yeah. the angels, for some have been visited, unaware." That's right. Amen. Unaware. Come Say on. that again, brother. Be not, uh, be not forgetful. So be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for some have been visited, unaware by angels. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, my dad. One time, I remember he was telling we pick up a hitchhiker. Uh, my aunt, she picked up a hitchhiker down the road. And he said, "Jesus is coming soon." And she looked, and he was riding in the car. She looked up in my rear view mirror and looked back up there. And he was talking, and he was gone. He wasn't even in the back seat no more. Wow. Wow. Tell me that ain't God. Yes. I remember one time we was coming back from Mexico, Brother Forey. We was a kid, a little bitty kid. We had an old 66 Ford uh, AMC Rambler. If you know what, they may have had three on a tree. Yep. We had an old red Rambler, four-door Rambler. And, and we had a flat tire on my side, the back tire on the driver's side, going flat. And we could feel it here. Go, blah, 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 blah. And we went down. And Mama said, come on, kids, let's pray. We all gather hands and pray. And I remember that car raised up, raised up. And we went, I don't know how many miles, we went to the, the first gas station we seen. We went there to that gas station, Brother Forey, and my daddy mama bought a, a, a brand new tire. Brand new tire. There's an Exxon, I remember it was an Exxon gas station. You know how they used to have shops open? It was late at night. And he was already there. He late at night. Fixed to close up shop. We got there just in time. We bought a brand new tire for five dollars. That's all my mom and daddy had on. Thank you. Five dollars. We bought a brand new tire back in the seventies. Late 70s or early 70s. I think mid 70s could be. I was probably uh, six or seven years old. Thank you, Jesus. I remember mom and daddy prayed. We prayed. That tire just, I could hear it plump. Plump, 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 plump. Well, and mama said, come on, kids, and pray. We ain't got no spare tire. We got to pray. We all gathered hands and prayed. And that tire, that car raised up and got us to that gas station. 
Got a brand new tire. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's all I have tonight. You know, yeah, we're here for you. We're not, we're here for you. If you need Jesus, if you need Him to touch you and heal you in your body, if you can't sleep at night, God is here to, to comfort you and, and give you peace and joy and comfort and make you sleep like a baby. I know the devil comes in and torment people in their dreams and everything and people can't sleep and tormented and everything and and uh, having uh, sleeping problems. God is able, He's here to, to help you through that. If you got a, a pain in your body or ache or pain or or anything or there's nothing too big for God, He can't heal. Yes. If you're struggling with addictions, He's able to set you free. If you're struggling any kind of thing or anything you're seeking for God, He said, knock and shall be open. Thank Seek and you shall find. God is here. He's here to meet your need. God, the Lord said He's not a respected person. What He's done for me, He could do the same for you. Amen. He could do the same for you. He could heal you and touch you in your body and set you free and put your feet on a solid rock. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. He said He's the same yesterday and today and forever. He never changes. He's here. He died on the cross for you on Calvary that you wouldn't have to go to a devil's hell. See, the devil, the hell is not made for you. It's made for the devils and his angels. It's not intended for you to be, but it's your choice. Mm -hmm. God, He said, it's not for many men to perish, but to have life. It's not for anyone to perish and die and go to hell, but He come to give them life. And set them free, because that's why he died on Calvary. You. That you wouldn't have to go. And he done the ultimate sacrifice, so you don't have to go to a devil's hell. He paid the price already. Thank you, Jesus. The nail scarred hands and the stripes on his back. He done done it all for you, because he loved you so much. He done died and gave his life to you, that you can live and have life and, and be with him into eternity. He wants you to be with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to say